I thought we'd start uh, by explaining about branding. Uh, as best as you, we can tell, branding probably started uh, with Egypt about 2,700 years ago. They were branding cattle. Uh, it moved on to the Roman Empire, which were branding cattle. It kind of got lost in the mix after that. Uh, ended up in South America, and then eventually into Southwest United States um, when we had the cattle drives. This was right after the Civil War. So we were trying to figure out how to get cattle from this area here, where the wildest, meanest, longhorn cattle that ever survived lived in this area. And we were trying to get them up to Nebraska. And we did a pretty good job of it, quite frankly. Now, the reason we brand, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later, is to identify the animal. Because they all look the same, basically. Uh, whether it be a horse or a cow or a pig, they all look the same. The branding of cattle probably started in the United States uh, right after the Civil War, uh, somewhere in that area. And we, to identify whose cow was whose. All right, so what I have here, if you'd like to look at this, is, is a branding party. Now, we call them, brand, us cowboys call them branding parties. Uh, here's, a, here's a branding party. You can see all the, all the cows are waiting, anticipating pain and agony. So you got this cow, and you have a branding iron, which we'll talk about later, and it's in a cold, hot fire to get to a point where it's red hot. Uh, then we brand it. The question always comes up, d does it hurt? Darn right it hurts. And it hurts bad, but not forever and ever, amen. So yes, it does hurt, and there are other methods, but the most successful type of branding ever found is the hot iron branding. End of story. So you see here, they're getting ready for a branding party. You got the cow laid out, and then you move up here, and they're, they just put the hot iron on, on the cow. Generally speaking, you do it on the hip, right here. Horses, generally up here on the neck, but the cow down here. Branding uh, identifies, as I said before, identifies uh, the ownership. And you'll see here, here's many, many brands. And a little bit later in the other area, we'll talk about the brands. But basically, reading brands, basically, it's just like reading a book. It's from left to right, up to down. And you identify uh, many times by owner. Uh, Glenn Turner has GL blah, 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 because his name is Glenn Turner. Mine is Flying L. My brand, my personal brand is Flying L, which is an L with two wings, Flying L. <clears throat> the family's brand is 2LK, which is two uh, luffs and a Knox in sequence, 2LK. So you can come up with any kind of a brand you want, but there are many, many, there are actually 472 registered brands in the state of Nebraska by the Nebraska Brand Committee. Nebraska Brand Committee controls the registration of brands, and they're located in Alliance, Nebraska. Well, I think it's time to move over to the other area. Yeah. All right, over here we have uh, a beautiful uh, example of a real branding iron. And this branding iron is dated 1899, and this is a brand from the Middale Ranch, which is out on, in the Sand Hills. And they have been around for, I say forever, not really forever, uh, probably been around since the 1840s, 1845, and are still in existence. Uh, this is a be beautiful example <clears throat> of an early welded branding iron. Again, welding, uh, there's been welding in some form for a long time, but generally speaking, acceptable welding in this country, you date to about 1890 to 1900. So anything before that in a branding iron is a riveted branding iron. And I brought some examples so you can get an idea. What I have here is my personal brand, my, my brand, this is registered. 
and it's a flying L. So in other words, and it stands for Luff, is an L with two wings, flying L. So when you brand this, it ends up being flying L. This is a welded branding iron. This is a relatively new one in the early 60s. <coughs> the, the real antique one, now this is a riveted branding iron, which dates back to uh, before 1900. And if you had a close look at it, it's all put together with, with, with rivets because there wasn't any welding technology in that period of time. So you, you, your only choice was to rivet. So there it is. This is, a, this is a DB, and this is an antique. This is my personal, this is mine. No, it's not for sale uh, because they are now going for big, big bucks, the, the very early ones. Another kind of branding arm that I'd like to show you is this. Now we think in terms, generally we think in terms of branding as cattle. And basically that's true. But in order to separate the herds, sometimes you had to do horses. And horses generally, not always, generally would be branded on the neck right here. Hear that noise? That's searing the hair and the, and the, and the leather. And yes, it hurts. So, the, the uh, Nebraska Brand Committee, uh, which is of some interest, was formed in 19, uh, about 1941. And basically there's about 724 listed brands in the state of Nebraska. And then the, the, how you come up with a brand is kind of interesting. I have a sheet here, you can't see it, but basically it says, you know, what you do is a few accepted uh, variations of the letter A. So what you have here is um, uh, a flying A, you got two wings, just like the flying L, you got two wings on it. You got a lazy A, it's laying down, so it's a lazy A. You got, uh, what else we got here? Walking A, got, got a couple of feet on there. Uh, then the one that it's this is almost this is a joke, but it's how they did this. Here's the two two P. And if we had a large group of people, we would have a contest to see who could figure out what in the world that means. Anybody here got an idea? The answer is no, you don't. All right, so here we go. The above brand is two lazy, so it's the two lazy P which basically is too lazy to pee. <laughs> too lazy to pee. This is not a real brand, but this shows you the in ingenuity that some of these people had coming up with brands. This could be too lazy to pee ranch. Could be. Probably wasn't, but it could be. Um, so that's... That's basically the story of... of uh, of this science, if you will, and it was a science. One of the things, that, the reason they did this, and I didn't explain this before, is that in the, in the later days of, of cattle drives and cattle raising, uh, cows, they would put cows out on open range. Now that's before the government got involved and started subdividing everything, but open range was, I'd, I'd send my cows out there and they'd, they'd feast on the, on the wild hay grasses, for the summer, and then I have to go get them. Well, I got to know which one's mine and which one's yours. Got to got to know that. So that's one of the reasons we branded. So we branded from from the trail drives all the way up there for the same reason because there were, at one point in time, there were thousands of cows coming up from from Texas. Thousands. I mean, one herd could be a thousand cows, and there might be six herds on the trail at any given time. So we had to figure out who. Who's your cow and who's my cow and who's your cow? It's very important because when we get up to, to North Platte or Ogallala, the cowboy capital of the world, by the way, at that point in time, or, or close to Lincoln, we need to be able to separate all these cows and figure out which one's mine and which one's yours so we can take them to market. End of story.
Thank you very much.